Here it is, this only product news right outside the 17th district. Josh from Accountability for All is walking up with Hot Tow Truck Girl. There's a lot, there's a, there is a lot of uh... Let's go phones down so they can't see. There's a lot of uh, action happening outside. Good to meet you, brother. One by one, one by one. I mean, it's all. Really one, kind of one, by one. one by one. One by one. No, it's none of these same off. It's unfortunate. Oh, yeah? Yeah, not too long ago. I yeah, yeah. Go I'm, I'm the guy that came up here trying to see if I could bail, bail him out. Right? Oh, did you, man? Yeah. Bless you. Yeah. I gotta catch this up. This is what I was talking about the last time. And the thing I think this is what they do for fun. That's uh, they get that out for the parties and uh, the policeman's ball. So we're in the 17th district. We're just one week ago. Oh, well, well, it's all good. That's pretty cool. How you doing, fellas? I can expect. Here on the wall, we have a COPA. Oh, Civilian okay. Office of a Police Accountability. Civilian. So maybe I should sign in? Police. Sergeant, am I supposed to sign in with you? It says, all. Oh, does that mean, like, anyone coming to the police station can come check with you? No, only Security. Oh, all right. Have any of the badges in the police? For purposes. Because I'm asking you to identify by your state policy, by state law, and by your department of policy. State law? Yes, no state law. There's not? It's a department policy. It's not a state law. It, it, well, chapter 30. So if you're going to. Yeah, it's not chapter 30. It's just. It's a it's department policy. Well, it's a little gray area because right, of the so federal consent decree. Law 1476. 1476. Okay. And yeah, it is state law, but it was one of the department policy. Sorry, it's obviously a gray area, right? Because there is a federal consent decree, which is a legally enforceable uh, binding uh, deal, right? And the federal consent decree says you have to identify yourself. Is that not correct? All right, my federal consent decree is a department policy. Okay. No, I didn't ask you to identify. I asked you to. I was just asking you what was going on. You're misinterpreting my question. I don't have to answer any question. I didn't say you did. I said you're misinterpreting my question. I don't think you're listening when I'm talking. I think you're just making up the answers before I say anything. Because I've been talking and you've just been responding to things I have not been saying. Does that... So, what, are, what's, uh, what do you understand about the federal consent decree? Um... I understand with emergency lights, like if obviously if you guys have emergencies you have access to, like you're exempt from tra like certain traffic laws or parking and stuff like that because you have to be able to park wherever you need to to be able to access whatever emergency or to assist any citizen in need. Um, if there is no emergency, right, is it legal for a police officer, for, I'm just throwing an example up there, to park in front of, it says, let's say there's a fire hydrant, it says tow zone, and there's a handicap ramp. Is it, oh, is it legal for an officer to park there? I mean, well, you, you work for me, I don't, you know, so you are, work for you, you do, what, do you, I don't work for who you. pays you, who pays you, Did you the private sector, what's up, Lieutenant, nothing, how you guys doing, so, man, good, can I have a badge number, please, yeah, can I have a few dollars, badge number is 530, appreciate it, thanks, man, it's awesome, have a good night, man, Filming isn't a crime. What's not assault any more citizens are violating their right to film. The, the Lou was definitely a lot more hospitable than the desk sergeant. The desk sergeant seems to be a little bit grumpy today. Oh, look at this word, boys and girls. Look at this word. I'm not even playing. An obligation or willingness to accept responsibility or to account for one's actions. Accountability. 
But guess what? My name is Accountability for All. You're live right now with close to 500 people watching. I have a combined audience of about 100,000 people, and I came here from Boston to make sure that there was some accountability for your legal actions. Because when someone films, they're practicing their civil rights. That doesn't give you the ability to assault them, to censor, or violate their civil rights. No comment's a very easy way to, uh, kind of touch base on this, but I love this. Civilian is a person who is not a member of a military police or fighting force. Police, responsible for the prevention and detection of crime. Excuse me, sir. Is Sergeant Daniels working tonight? No. Okay, thank you. What's your name in start number? The fact that I'm here right now... Vol, 19891. Yeah. Might Sound be a off. step towards accountability. What's your name uh, in star number? 12. I'm sorry? Trapolis 4412. Okay. Yeah, you were talking while I was talking before I got the question out. I know you were anticipating it. it. I'm sorry, sir? And I restated it. Did you, did you get it that time? I did, I did. Okay, thank I know. You. I can see that you're a little bit angry. I'm not I, angry at all. Okay, so I'm sitting here. And I guess you're a peach to deal with. come to Chicago and get 10000 on some oath-breaking kindness. So are you guys aware of the video that went online? Uh, Sergeant Daniels, I believe his name is, went outside with uh, a kid with, um, I don't know, I, he has a, a learning impairment, right? And they kind of bullied him. They laughed at him. They made fun of the way he talked. And uh, he asked them to identify themselves. And he got, they said, no, no, in a mockingly way, right? He said he was mentally challenged. So uh, he wasn't even in the station. He was outside the station. They came and confronted him and they wanted to know what his problem was. So he followed them in and uh, asked for their name and their badge number. They would not identify themselves. He went outside. He called Josh, who That's lives me. in Boston. That's Josh. And he got on the phone with him and told him, well, go back in there and uh, just ask for their name and their badge number. It's a simple request. Right? He came back in here when he asked for his name and his badge number. He was put in a chicken wing. His face was planted into that door right there. His phone was well, smashed. Look, it, it wasn't, it, what happened is I called first, and they started giving names and badge numbers. But one of your tyrant, oath-breaking pig sergeants told him it wasn't legal to film. And I had the whole thing recorded on Facebook video right there. So it's legal to film. So they took his phone, they throw it on the ground, and he says, am I being detained? He says, no. So he's not, he's not detained. He's free to go while he's getting smushed up against the door. He's not under arrest. He says, I'll give you one more chance. I'm going to put you under arrest so you're going to stop filming. And he says, I'm not going to stop filming. It's my right. So they smack, so they, they bundle him. They put him on the ground. Then they put him under arrest. Well, they can't charge him with disorderly conduct because he wasn't disorderly. They can't charge him with filming because filming isn't a crime. Photography is not a crime. So after three hours, because you guys got like what? Like over 500 calls, right, from all around the world? Because I get bills from everyone asking me if I could help pay for the calls because they were disgusted by your actions, right? So then after... When people are behind closed doors, no one can really comment on the issue. He's released. And he's re filming. At the end of the day, I got the video. He said, I'm going to arrest you if you continue filming. So it's bad cops like that that will put you guys in danger. Right? It's bad cops like that that if you're a good cop, will give you a bad name. And it's bad when people from all over the world. Because you know what? Right now, everyone on this live feed is putting the U.S in the U.S. of A, us, we the people. And it's bad when people from all over the globe, from this, from this side of the continent, from this side of the world, and from this great nation, have to band together to fly someone from Boston out here to hold you guys accountable. Because you know what? No one thought that kid was gonna have a following. No one thought his voice was gonna be heard. Well, guess what? It was heard loud and clear, and I'm his megaphone for freedom. And all you guys, every single one of you, because if you didn't stop it, you were for it. And I know that at least one person here right now was on that night. And you know what? You guys, he's a very nice kid, but you're very lucky because that was an excessive force issue. And the Constitution, luckily, allows any citizen, when an officer is without, out of the bounds of their realm and not acting in the capacity of their duty, they can use up a deadly force to restrain the criminal combatant, which is the officer. And he took that beat. After you guys called them mentally handicapped, and the world's already seen that, I'm saving the video of him getting assaulted for trial. But four officers out there, including the sergeant, say, well, you're mentally ill, you can't talk, you can't get the words out of your mouth, you need an ambulance. I'm your own side. Pick on me? This is the thing, I got lawyers for days. I'll take the arrest, I'll fight the case, I'll win. And I'm gonna hold you accountable, I'm gonna hold you accountable, I'm gonna hold you accountable, you accountable, and you accountable. 
Because one is a representative of all. Because no one's distincted themselves and said, you know what? What we've done is wrong. A sign on the wall that says accountability, an obligation and willingness to accept responsibility or to count for one's actions, posting a sign is as good as the sign in the paper that it's written on. Just like the policies, right? Oh, it's our policy you can't film. It's as worthless as that sign, right? You don't pick on someone and say you're mentally ill. This is not my suggestion. You can go on his YouTube channel right now. You guys laughed in his face and told him he was mentally ill. You made fun of him and accused him of being mentally retarded. And you know what? What if he was? And so what if he was? Shame on you and you and you and you and you. Do you have anything to say for yourself? Forget the arrest for a minute. Forget the fact that it's an ongoing investigation. Okay? As far as... Answer whatever question you want. Thank you. I appreciate that. Just please stay there so I can see This you. is a public area and I'll be right here. Thank you. That's fine. Is it appropriate for an officer to confront any civilian and tell them they're mentally ill? Not asking for assistance or if he requires assistance for some mental anxiety. But in a, in a manner of gesture to make fun, to demean. I'm not sure where you're going, what you're, if you're referring to a specific incident, I don't know what you're referring to, but it is appropriate to ask somebody if they do need treatment. That's including for a mental health okay, issue. So he asked for a badge number and he says, what are you, mentally ill, are you retarded? That, that's, that, that's treatment? I can't and respond to that because that's an acceptable that's... answer. Are you retarded and do you need treatment? I, I have no idea of what you're referring to, All so asking is you're asking me a hypothetical In general, question. okay, not to see if someone needs assistance, okay? If an officer in a demeaning fashion, is it acceptable for him to make fun of a citizen and, and poke fun at him and call him mentally ill or retarded as a form to demean him? In your estimation? N never. Okay. Well, you know what? I appreciate that, and you guys got some work to do here. Because you know what? We're going to hold them accountable, all right? I'm going to be at that trial, and I, get, I can promise you something. And I've never made a promise on film. I've made two promises. I made a promise to him that we would hold you guys accountable. I'm not sure who's him. The victim. I, I don't even saw. know what you're referring to. His name, well, you know what? You should get to know his name. His name's Joe Luna. That's the person you guys beat and illegally detained. Arrested. Arrested. What you're okay. referring to. So, you guys, I think he had a problem with you not idea. When people were saying he was mentally ill. So he, asked, he called me all the way in Boston. I set a Facebook recording. He came in and he asked for IDs. And I made a few phone calls. You guys did ID. You did the right thing at that point. And he was leaving on his way out. The sergeant came in and says, and it's all in video. It's not contestable. It's not edited. You're not allowed to film in here. And he says, well, I am allowed to film. And I'm going to film. He goes, no, you're not. And he goes, well, don't. And then he goes to grab his elbow. He says, don't touch me. I can film. And then at this point, he pushed him between that glass partition over there. And he tried to grab his phone. And he said, I might be entertained. He goes, no. He goes, you can't touch me. And then he took his phone, he threw it on the ground. He goes, I'm going to give you, quote, I'm going to give you one more chance to stop filming or you're going to be under arrest. I'm not going to stop filming. On the ground he goes, and then I got a real great shot of his face smushed up against the ground. And the side saying, I told you to stop filming. Now, they couldn't charge him with filming. That's not a crime. He wasn't being disorderly. They didn't charge him with it. They would have. They charged him with criminal trespassing. However, he was not ever given a trespass notice, excuse me, a trespass notice or a, or a trespass warning. So then that issue will be adjudicated in court, right? It absolutely will. And you know what? I hope that officer has grandkids because they're going to go hungry and starve on the street so he can eat tacos or whatever else he chooses to eat while laughing that you guys made the mistake to pick on him. And I promise you, I will offer every bit of financial assistance I have I will offer my attorneys, and I will not stop until that officer is telling people that they shouldn't park in front of J.C. Penney. So if you guys have anything to say, would you like to issue an apology for what happened to him? It's not you, you didn't do it, but would you like to issue an apology for what happened? Because I came a long way for an apology. On behalf of your station, on behalf of the incident, or just in general, that his I, rights I, might have been violated. I'm listening to you. I'm not going to apologize for something that I don't have this knowledge of. What do you okay, mean? You guys have knowledge of it. As I, as I stated to you, sir, this, if this person, this person was, a, was placed in custody, he was charged with a crime, that issue will be adjudicated in court. So no apology? No, no apology for me. 
on behalf of your op, you can't own that. Say, listen, you know what? If something was done to him where his rights are violated, I'm sorry. If that were the case, then... If that, that if that was the case, though, can you apologize? If that were the case, it, agree with him, maybe disagree with him. That, that statement will come at the end of this whole investigation if there is... I'm a asking you. You seem like an alright guy. Well, thank you. I'm asking you. If what I'm saying is true, we'll say hypothetically. If what I'm saying is true and if this happened, what you did, because it's about it, six If what you claim to be true is in fact, it is true, then that, that is a shame. I, I will tell you that. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, can I say this real quick, Luke? Because I'm from here. I'm from Chicago. So it hits a little bit closer home to me, right? He's from Boston. He's not from here. I already came here. And uh, if you watch the video, it's indefensible what Sergeant Daniels, I believe what his name is. He was flanked by four officers. Two of them were patrol officers. Two of them were behind the desk. A young, uh, bald, or a bald uh, probably Puerto Rican, and a taller, bald um, gentleman, white. Uh, they, they came out with smiles on their face. They knew exactly what they were going to do. They called him. He is he may be autistic. He may have been learning disabilities. They came out with smiles on their faces, and they were there to bully him. It was the most disgusting act I've ever seen, right? And maybe that might be a little bit hyperbole, but there's no way you can watch that video and say, I'm okay with those people like being my... Uh, no, thank you. I, I would encourage you to give that... Well, in your free time. In your free time, Lou. Give, Look up give, Joe Luna, 17th District. To the lawyer. And I can promise you, just by seeing your reaction and stuff, I can promise you there's no way that you would defend their actions. It's indefensible. So at least I think that he's owed an apology. Obviously, you know, obviously we got to wait for the court case to be right. done. Due process has to take its place, right? That's part of the whole deal. But, I mean, it was just wrong. It was just wrong. It was five, four on one. On a mentally handicapped, whatever. It was just, it was wrong. And they're bullies. So, you could tell Sergeant Daniels we were here. It's so unfortunately he wasn't working the desk tonight because I don't think he would bully us the way he bullied that kid. Unless it's an ego thing and you have to hold that phone up. Because I'll make the rest of this video about you because I can promise you it's going to circulate. There's nothing to do with an ego thing. Okay, so is that a work phone? You engage right, in work it's, now. it's your personal phone. So right now, I've read your policy. Like I've said, my attorneys read your policy. And it goes against and violates your policy. Use your personal phone while within the official capacity of your duty. It's not an emergency or work call. I have two personals a day, and I'm taking a personal. Then take your break and take off. Oh, you have to take off your badge. You have to clock out. But you're not, the public's not paying you to play on your phone. I'm on my break. Then take your break somewhere else where you're not acting within the public capacity of your duty. Your break room is the same spot as your workstation? Unfortunately, when you work the desk, it is. Yeah. I'm asking. Thank you very much, Sergeant. I appreciate you guys are both a great professional. I'm sorry if my attitude is directed at you. Your sergeant's indicated that you have a break room. Please take it there. Okay. Or else I'm going to have to get a complaint form against you. And trust me, I'll have about five. We'll, we'll